Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhad, and today I'm presenting at the 9th International Symposium on Focal Therapy and Imaging, our work regarding ultrafocal therapy. Our trial is titled MR Ultrasound Fusion Imaging and Nanoparticle Directed Focal Therapy for Ablation of Prostate Tissue. Before we begin, we do have some disclosures. The primary sponsor of the study was Nanospectra Biosciences. Research equipment was supplied by Invivo, a Philips healthcare company. Currently, I have no financial disclosures. To begin, we have a 67-year-old Caucasian gentleman who was initially diagnosed with low-grade, low-volume prostate cancer. The patient was undergoing active surveillance and during one of his transrectal ultrasound-guided biopsies, developed sepsis. The patient after that did not follow up for three years with a urologist. He then presented to Mount Sinai and underwent a 3T MRI. There was no disease outside the prostate and or any lymphadenopathy. However, there was a large left apex lesion measuring 0.4 cc's with an overall suspicion of 4 out of 5. Here are some representative images of the patient's multiparametric MRI. The blue arrow denotes the lesion. Please note, in the left lower corner of the screen, the DC shows a hypervascular lesion. The patient is still concerned about the infection rates associated with transrectal biopsies. Here at Mount Sinai, we've helped pioneer the development of a new transperineal EM tract MR ultrasound fusion biopsy platform in collaboration with InVivo. Please note that we have good fusion in the left upper hand corner of the screen. See the needle being placed along the guide path. We're able to position the needle and sample the lesion. On biopsy, the patient was actually found to have Gleason 3 plus 4 prostate cancer and a clinically significant tumor volume. After counseling the patient and the information that we had from this EM tract fusion biopsy, he was enrolled in the nanoparticle ablation trial. The mechanism of nanoparticle directed photothermal ablation is different than our standard laser ablation where optical energy is created and generates heat and forms an ablation zone. The gold aura shells absorb heat for tumor specific ablation. Well, how is this accomplished? It's accomplished by the wavelength has been optimized for exogenous absorption. See the chart in the left lower hand part of the screen? The orange is at 810 nanometers where the aura shells absorb more energy than water and hemoglobin, which are the blue and red lines at the bottom of the graph. The normal power created from the laser is subablative, so it does not ablate tissue unless there's particles deposited within it. This is an example of the gold nanoparticle, or the aura shells. To put that in perspective, the size compared to a red blood cell. These are placed into solution and then infused on treatment day one. As you know, tumors neovascularity have leaky capillaries. The gold particles are able to circulate through the body, then are preferentially deposited into these hypervascular areas, as shown here. As you can see, the gold particles are deposited within the tissues. On treatment day two, we're able to set up the case, use the same information we used during the transperineal fusion biopsy. We're able to outline where the tumor is and then determine our best approach for treatment. As seen here in the lower right corner, I've outlined the urethra as well as the treatment area. I have placed a significant margin and our total ablation zone is approximately one cc. The lesion is approached in a transperineal fashion using a combination of ultrasound and MR ultrasound fusion technology. In the right lower quadrant, the yellow arrow shows the intended ablation zone. We've created a margin around the lesion. In the upper left hand corner, you will see a needle being placed under ultrasound and fusion guidance through the lesion. These needles have an outer catheter which allows us to place the laser fiber for ablations. We record the area in the 3D space to allow us to go back for a post-ablation analysis to determine ablation zones with correlation with energy applied. Once all the catheters are in place, we're able to start the ablation. As you know, it's very difficult to observe 
heat changes on ultrasound. We do use thermal couples, which were also placed, one between the lesion and the urethra, and the one at the level of the non-VA's fascia. Each laser ablation takes approximately three minutes and ablates 1.2 centimeters of tissue and an eight millimeter diameter. This was repeated multiple times to allow for an adequate ablation zone. Post ablation, we're able to review our technique. On the left side of the screen is the 3D model with overlaid with the transperineal grid. I've marked the areas where the thermocouples were placed as well as the laser catheter placement during the procedure. On the right is the 3D model representation created by the fusion device. This shows the relationship of the prostate, the urethra, to the lesion. As you can see here, the laser catheter is recorded in their exact 3D orientation. So after the procedure, we're able to assess our ablation zones. On treatment day four, post-ablation MRI was obtained. The pretreatment MRI is on the top row. The yellow circles outline the region of interest or the lesion that we appreciated to make the diagnosis. 40 hours post-ablation on the T2 image, you have significant amounts of edema. We have non-specific changes with regards to the ADC map. And as we know, dynamic contrast enhanced MRI is the best way to assess post-treatment success using ablation technology with regards to prostate cancer. Notice here on the color map, there's absolutely no signs of enhancement. And on the dynamic contrast enhanced MRI with subtraction images, there's no enhancement within the region. As you notice, there was a significant margin created to allow for any errors in targeting. The study design is a phase two study. It's open label, multi-center, single dose study of oral ACE therapy via nanoparticle directed laser excitation. We're evaluating the ability to target and destroy prostate tissue using MR ultrasound fusion imaging. Our eligibility includes patients with low to intermediate risk prostate cancer up to Gleason 7, a PSA less than 15 or a normal PSA density. The patients must have no disease outside the prostate. The 12 core biopsy can overlap, but there can be no disease outside the areas intended for ablation in the study. Our follow-up is at 48 to 72 hours, the patient undergo a multiparametric MRI. At three months, they undergo a repeat MRI and a targeted only biopsy to determine if the ablation zone was successfully treated. Patients have office visits at three and six and 12 months, and at one year, they undergo a repeat MRI and a standard biopsy for staging, as well as a targeted biopsy of any new lesions and the region that was previously treated. We follow these patients as for the standard of care every six months, and review biopsy is clinically indicated with imaging once yearly after treatment. It has been my great pleasure to present our work using gold nanoparticle directed therapy with fusion guidance here at the 9th International Symposium on Focal Therapy and Imaging. Please feel free to tweet at me any questions with the hashtag UFT. And for more information, please visit our website, as well as this talk will be posted to YouTube at the conclusion of this talk today. Again, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhat, and thank you very much for your time and attention during our presentation.